Welcome to Staying Safe on Campus for Broward College Students, Understanding the Signs and Symptoms of an Abusive Relationship. My name is Erin Ladwig. I'm a licensed mental health counselor and I work for Henderson Student Counseling Services where we provide the counseling to Broward College students. Later on in the presentation, I will discuss the services and how to get involved in them. The purpose of this training and the topics to be covered include an overview of sexual misconduct, identifying an abusive relationship, cycles and signs of violence and abuse, common reactions to violence and abuse, healthy relationships, and rights and services for those who have experienced sexual misconduct, violence, and or abuse. So let's go over some terms. What is sexual misconduct? Sexual misconduct is a general umbrella term for which includes but is not limited to the following offenses. Sexual harassment, stalking, dating violence, domestic violence, and sexual violence. Sexual harassment is any unwelcome sexual advances, requests for sexual, sexual favors, and other verbal or physical conduct with a sexual nature in which makes submission to or rejection of such conduct, either an explicit or implicit bias for admissions and or academic decisions affecting the individual or unreasonably interferes with the individual's education or academic performance by creating an intimidating, hostile, or offensive environment. Examples of sexual harassment include unwelcome physical contact of a sexual nature, such as patting, pinching, or unnecessary touching, overt or implied threats against an individual to induce him or her to perform sexual favors or to engage in an unwelcome sexual relationship, verbal innuendos or jokes of a sexual nature, including graphic or degrading verbal comments about an individual and or his or her appearance, <clears throat> The use of sexually suggestive terms or gestures to describe a person's body, clothing, or sexual activities, or displaying offensive sexually suggestive pictures or materials on campus. Stalking is a conduct directed at a specific person that would cause a reasonable person to fear for his or her safety or the safety of others, suffer substantial emotional distress. Dating violence is committed by a person who is or has been in a social relationship of a romantic or intimate nature with the victim. The existence of such relationship would be determined based on the reporting party's statement and with consideration of one, the length of the relationship, two, the type of relationship, and three, the frequency of interaction between the persons involved in the relationship. Domestic violence is a felony or misdemeanor crime of violence committed by a current or former spouse or intimate partner of the victim, by a person whom the victim shares a child in common, a person who is cohabitating with or has cohabitated with the victim as a spouse, a person similarly situated to a spouse of the victim under applicable domestic or family violent laws. Any other person against an adult or victim, youth victim, who is protected from that person's acts under applicable domestic or family violent laws or as further defined in Florida statutes. Sexual violence refers to physical sexual acts perpetrated against a person's will or where a person is incapable of giving consent due to the student's age, use of drugs or alcohol, or an intellectual or other disability preventing from giving, having the capacity to give consent. Consent is an affirmative indication of a voluntary agreement to engage in the particular sex act or conduct in question. However, consent cannot be obtained through coercion, force, threats, or intimidation. Consent cannot be given to by someone who is not able to effectively communicate or to understand the nature of the conduct being engaged in 
or is otherwise incapacitated as a result of having consumed drugs or alcohol or for any other reason. Silence or absence of resistance on the party of, part of an individual does not imply consent. Past consent does not imply future consent. Consent to engage in a sexual activity with one person does not imply consent to engage in sexual activity with another. Consent can be withdrawn at any time, even during the sexual interaction. At this point, I'm going to show you a video. If you have any further questions on consent, this should hopefully clear that up for you. All right, so I hope that that did help and clarified any questions you have on consent. Um, let's continue. So now we're gonna go into identifying an abusive relationship. On the screen that you have in front of you, we have the power and control wheel, which identifies characteristics of an abusive relationship, such as emotional abuse, intimidation, isolation, economic abuse, sexual abuse, using children, threats, using citizenship or residency privileges. And if you want to, you can go into it and you can start to look into the characteristics for each. And it can kind of tell you whether or not you are in an abusive relationship. 
The cycle of abuse includes four stages. And the first stage is tension building, where tensions increase, there's a breakdown of communication, the, the victim becomes fearful and need feels the need to placate the abuser. The second stage is the incident. Verbal, emotional, or physical abuse, anger, blaming, arguing, threats, and intimidation. The third stage of a cycle, the cycle of abuse is reconciliation. The abuser apologizes, gives excuses, blames the victim, denies the abuse occurred, or says that it wasn't as bad as the victim claims. The fourth stage is then the calm. The incident is then forgotten. No abuse is taking place. It's what we call the honeymoon phase. After that happens, the cycle will then start up again. Tensions will start to build. Another incident will happen, reconciliation and a calm. Someone in a abusive relationship goes through this cycle many times. So batterers and victims, signs of abuse and violence. As you can see, there's the tension building phase, the explosion phase, the honeymoon or remorse phase. And you can see where they give the characteristics of the batterer and the victim, the responses the victim might have. So you could go through that and you can look into it and see if you can recognize any of this in your own relationships and start to evaluate the, if your relationships are healthy or unhealthy. Common reactions to abuse and violence include fear, shock, anxiety, disbelief, thoughts or attempts of suicide, embarrassment, shame, anger, self-blame, sexual disturbances, sleep disturbances, eating disturbances, social withdrawal, guilt, <clears throat> guilt, denial, and depression. So let's talk about what a healthy relationship looks like. You've seen a lot of characteristics of an unhealthy relationship. So now how do you tell if you're in a healthy relationship? A healthy relationship, the two people are able to spend time apart. They respect each other's opinions and decisions. They spend time with friends and family members. They stay true to their values and beliefs. They can speak openly and honestly. They can maintain personal interests and activities. They have clear rules and boundaries. And they accept each other's differences while sharing equal time responsibility, and respect. Equality in a healthy relationship. So a relationship that has equality includes non-threatening behavior, respect, trust and support, honesty and accountability, responsible parenting, shared responsibilities, economic partnership, and negotiations and fairness. So what if you have a friend that you suspect is in a relationship that includes domestic violence? Here are some tips to be able to help your friend. Do ask them if something is wrong. Express your concerns. Listen and validate their feelings. Offer help. Support his or her decisions. Don't. Wait for him or her to come to you. Judge or blame. Pressure them. Give advice. Place conditions on your support or your relationship with them. Here's the dating bill of rights. You have the right to ask for a date, refuse a date, to suggest activities during your date, to refuse any activities even if your date is excited about them, to have your own feelings and express them, to have your limits and your values respected, to, to tell someone not to interrupt you, to tell your partner when you need affection, to be heard, to refuse to lend money, to refuse affection, to refuse sex with anyone just because they took you on an expensive date. You have the right to refuse sex at any time for any reason. 
You have the right to have friends and space aside from your partner. Now your dating responsibilities. You need to determine your own limits and values. You need to respect, not violate the limits of others. You need to communicate clearly and honestly. You can ask for help when it's needed. You have the responsibility to be considerate, to check your actions and decisions to determine if they are good for you or bad for you. You have the responsibility to set high goals for yourself in your dating relationship. So at Broward College, we have campus safety on each of the campuses. Here are the locations of each campus safety office. At Central, it's in building 19, room 114. At North, it's building 46, room 114. In South, it is building 71, room 131. Know your rights on campus. Students who believe that they have been subjected to sexual misconduct on college property, at a college-sponsored event, or by any member of the college community regardless of location, are encouraged to report the incident to the Dean of Student Affairs or to or designee on the campus and, if applicable, law enforcement. So if anything has happened and you feel like you want to report it, please go to any of those uh, campus safety locations that we spoke of, or you can contact your Title IX coordinator, who is Neil Cohen. His information is on the screen. You know where his office is, he has a telephone number, and he would be more than happy to discuss this with you. So let's talk about the services that I provide. So at Henderson, we provide student counseling services where you get six free and confidential therapy sessions. And our hours of operation are Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. We also have a 24-hour crisis line and on-call availability. To schedule an appointment, you can contact the telephone number 954-424-6916. And my front office staff is going to uh, help you to get through to our portal. And once you fill out your information through our portal, our front office staff will then contact you and schedule you with your intake appointments. The Broward College Guardian app. So the Guardian app was uh, implemented and put onto Broward College's website. The Broward College Guardian mobile phone app enhances safety on campus through real-time interactive features that create a virtual safety network of friends, family, and campus safety. So by putting this app onto your phone, you can contact campus safety if you feel that you're in danger um, you can set timers for yourself to get from your class to your car. Otherwise, the notification will go to campus safety. Please read up about all of the benefits of the Guardian app. It is, there is a link on Broward College's website to get to the Guardian app and then figure out how to download it. Services and resources, if you feel that you have experienced any type of sexual misconduct, all the way up to rape. So the Nancy J. Cotterman Rape Crisis Center, you have the information. There's Women in Distress Domestic Violence Center and Broward County 24-Hour Crisis Help and Information and Referral Center. Nationally, we have the National Domestic Violence Hotline, the National Sexual Assault Hotline. Thank you for your attendance. I hope that you enjoyed the presentation and be on the watch for more presentations that we're going to do. Have a great day.